What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Sup FM. I'm one of your hosts, Lawrence Deloach. As always, I'm joined by my guy, Luke Trovisi. Hey, what's up, man? It's just you know how it is. It's just you and me every week. Consistent. You and me. Definitely nobody else on this podcast that we're missing. You know, just having a good time. We got a guest with us this week. Well, hold on, hold on. Before I even do that, let me let before we even bring in our guest this week, Luke. I just want to say, normally we are joined by the third guy. Uh, should we say his? We'll, we'll say his name. Yeah, Christopher. Christopher, Christopher Cheney. Ch- Cheney. 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 Whatever. Yeah. He's not here this week, and I don't know. He's he's celebrating his, his mother's birthday. Happy birthday, mom! Yeah. All the listeners, let them know. Let Chris know. Send his mom a happy birthday shout out. So. Now we are bringing in a special guest today, and I'm happy to have this guy back. Yeah. Haas, what's up, Haas? What is up, everybody? Wow, my podcast voice just kicked in before I even noticed it. <laughs> it caught me so off guard. What's up, everybody? You know, it's your boy Haas. Mm-hmm. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you, man. We, we've been thinking oh. about it for a while, and you know, yeah. what you, you this is this is an open forum now that Chris isn't here. How do you feel about the show now that Chris isn't around anymore, huh? How are you feeling? Man, putting me on the spot. Uh, just, go ahead. It's great. It sounds amazing. You guys, you know, <laughs> now, now, now we're just three POCs uh, on the on the the airway on the the airwaves now. So everybody gets a different perspective. Finally, right? Sup <laughs> FM, also known as Hot ninety seven, also known as <laughs> Four Blacks by Blacks. Let's get it. <laughs> get it let's get it no nah, I'm, I'm just happy happy to have you here uh happy easter to the listeners today's well when this comes out you know it'll be after easter but happy easter we got a lot of things to get into this week and sure. i think we should start out with uh luke what would you like to start out with um first off i'd like to start with plugs let's get those out of the way oh love it do them yeah. let's do that so first off, you can follow the podcast on all social media platforms at Sub Podcast NYC. That's Sub Podcast NYC. Uh, you could also uh, join our Discord. The link's going to be in the description of this video slash podcast. Um, Lawrence, where can they find you? You can find me at LZD325 on all social media platforms. And also, I have another podcast that I hope you guys are listening to. It's called I Hate This Job. And, uh, yeah, you can follow that on um, Instagram at SUP. Wait a second. I just said SUP. You can follow that (laughs) podcast at I Hate This Job Pod. And Haas, where can we find you? You can find me on all socials at Who Is Haas. You can find my podcast at my first kicks pod um mm-hmm. and you can also find my podcast everywhere everywhere listen to my first kicks everybody yeah you've and, had all three of the sub sub boys on there yeah week. last week was chris's week and i oh. guess after that he hopped off of this huh he uh, realized he had more potential or something right yeah, <laughs> yeah uh. i unlocked them oh and you can find me at trevizus at t-r-o-v-e-e-z-u-s that is perfect. my stuff perfect and make sure you follow chris yeah. and not that cheney and uh yeah let's let's get let's 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 talk about this bernie sanders tweet man Mm -hmm. let's jump into that all right first off you know basically nike's not paying taxes and who else to come talk about it than our known og at this point yeah bernie sanders you know what do we think what do you think of of what bernie said well i got i got a couple things that i want to get off my chest with bernie said first off i love you bernie sanders but you were incorrect like a motherfucker. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. First off, he said a couple of things. He was talking about the the Air Force Ones. Ain't no one I know paying one hundred and twenty dollars for a pair of Air Force Ones. All right. No. Exactly. Not that not happening. Not that. All right. Now, listen, I'll pay one hundred and twenty dollars for a few Nike sneakers. But Air Force Ones, I ain't paying no more than seventy five, eighty dollars. Right. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, he, he makes a lot of sense. You know, it, it, Nike he said, let's read the tweet. If you paid one hundred and twenty dollars for a pair of Nike Air Force One shoes, you paid more to Nike than it paid in federal income taxes over the last three years. Mm -hmm. While it made four point one billion dollars in profit and Nike's founder, Phil Knight, became over twenty three billion dollars richer. Yes, we must tax the rich. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And there's a, a picture of a person with an anime picture that says period king. That's that's what he says as a reply. They replied to 
I like Bernie, man. I think he's, um, you know, he's fighting the battles, man. He's got jerked out of two elections, you right. know, the last two, 2016, he got, he got jerked out of the nomination. 2020, he got jerked out of the nomination. I love what Bernie fights for, man. He he speaks his mind. And mm-hmm. um, I, I agree with him, man. You know, a lot, a lot of these places like Amazon and Nike, man, the, the, they, the amount of taxes that they don't pay is astronomically insane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. I did I did think about um, immediately when he was talking about that hundred twenty dollars and how it's broken up. I was thinking back to our episode with Farrell when she came on and she kind of broke up the hundred dollars on a shoe. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of interesting because it was like, you know, you see the perspective of the of like the I guess the manufacturer, like from her perspective. And then you see Bernie's perspective and nobody's happy. You know, <laughs> people people are not happy on both sides. I think it's very no, interesting. I- yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. And it's always just like about the overhead. And but it's like, you know, there's always going to be people in big corporations are always going to sidestep as much as possible and find loopholes and all this other shit. And you're just like, what can you do for us? Like, you know, you they're just feeding our need to want something. So mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to, to be like, yo, tax them. And then but they're, and then we're going to be like, but what about the bots that are taking away our <laughs> sneakers? You know, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough for because we're like when we look at it we're just like oh yeah big corporations are making a ton of money and and they're not they're not paying taxes you look at the previous president who only paid 750 dollars in taxes even though he's a freaking millionaire like it's crazy Mm -hmm. that the how many how much people pay to get out of paying taxes too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i'm i'm listen I, i he also had another tweet uh, that was going at a lot of corporations. Did you see the follow-up tweet Bernie no. Sanders had? No. Bernie oh. fingers out here. Twitter fingers out fucking here. Fucking Bernie <laughs> went on a fucking Twitter rage <laughs> tweet, and it, the tweet was it was typed out perfectly. The next one is uh, cost to consumers. Oh, I got it right here. Nike Air Max 270s, 150 Dish Network Basic Package, $64.99. FedEx Large Delivery Box, $20. Zoom Pro Monthly Membership, which we do pay for, We do guys. pay for that, yeah. $14.99. Federal Income Taxes Paid for Nike, Dish, FedEx, Zoom, $0. Yes, we must end our rigged tax code. Wow. Ooh. I mean, when was the last time you bought an Air Max 270, though? Listen, <laughs> Bernie, <laughs> Ber- Bernie, fuck, he choosing the fucked up models, but I still respect <laughs> the fact that he he's literally could have been like Jordan one. You pay this much for a Jordan one and a dish network, which I haven't seen a dish network inst- installation in maybe about 10 years <laughs> or a dish on somebody's house in maybe about 10 years. So he's picking and then Zoom made he made valid point in Zoom. But, you know. Like it, it's hilarious. Like everybody's evading the taxes. And and yet when Biden was about to get uh, elected, what was everybody's complaint? Nah, he's going to raise the taxes. He's going to raise all the taxes. Motherfuckers are not even paying taxes right now. So what are you talking about? <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I think, you know, it, it's this is uh this is what they're the rich get away with, man. That's why you think Bezos has been able to fucking bozo Bezos been able to eat well and and, you know, and then still be able to have these um I wouldn't these less than ideal conditions for workers, man. They don't get mm-hmm. shit. Bezos is a, a, a billionaire, one of the most rich people in the in the world. And I think it, it is something that needs to be addressed, man. These people, they need to uh pay taxes they need to you know as opposed to luke haas and lawrence paying taxes left and right you know i it, something needs to be done mm-hmm. it does. Mm-hmm. something needs to be done I, I don't know if you guys this is like not really streetwear news but i don't know if you've guys seen the news about the amazon warehouse in alabama but they're trying to unionize out there no oh. yeah they're trying to unionize out there so they're like i think it was going to a vote on friday so there's like no announcement on like what the decision was but everybody like Amazon, their their warehouse team or their marketing team was like starting to like at Bernie Sanders and like fight people on Twitter. It was really gross. Uh, but I think we might be seeing that a little bit of a shift right now. If uh, if that could actually come through, we'll see. Yeah, It'll be mean, very interesting. We I, I mean, I'm for unions 100 percent because that's how we end up with 
more balanced wages and all this, all the good stuff that actually helped the people who are doing the manual labor to get, get us from point A to point B. Um, so like all four unions and stuff like that, but it's like, are we going to end up seeing like strikes again? Cause that's going to be the crazy part. Cause yep. we're just going to have strikes and then we're not be getting, we're not going to be get our 12 cases of water that we were asking for to get second day delivered the next day. <laughs> days, bro. I need my two day water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, w- I was also just um, I was just reading something uh, on um, on the, uh, the the World Wide Web. And this is something that we didn't discuss pre um, pre show. But uh, Joe Biden has uh, supposedly uh, the American Rescue Plan Act uh, that he's uh, I think he signed in the law. And it's uh, some of the language includes, you know, us getting taxed on selling more than six hundred dollars in in goods mm. um and you get you know now back in you know before it's like you sell 20k and then you get taxed right. so now you used to have these big you know bulk sellers or these big you know resellers getting taxed and now you sell one you could sell one pair of shoes and then have to pay a tax on on the profit and it's like but yet nike doesn't have to pay taxes i don't get it man I don't get it, man. Leave my small resale business alone. All right. I did nothing wrong. I just sold a couple of sneakers. I made like 200 bucks last year <laughs> after like all of the costs. It's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, are I think, you? Okay. Oh, oh. No, nah, I was going to say, yeah, I think it's crazy because like that also um, affects like um, stocks too. Cause like, you start you start selling off stocks and stuff like that and then now you're mm. accruing and you're going to get now cuz that that same plan is like oh yeah we're going to add more to your taxes than what we're going to take out for how much you sell your stocks for oh. cuz you also have to you also have to account at the end of the year if you made over like 10k or something like that in stocks it, that gets taxed you have to talk about mm-hmm. it in your taxes mm-hmm. and it's all it's all in the same plan too it's ridiculous what was your question I was going to say, Haas, um, how how much have you been reselling in 2021? Have you been reselling? No, man, I'm not a reseller. I buy to keep. Buy to keep. OK, oh, no. Buy to keep. Okay. No, this I mean, listen, some of the <laughs> listeners out there are going to be like, fuck, Haas. I'm kind of like, listen, sometimes you do got to, you know, resell to play this game. But if you buy everything to keep, I respect it, man. No, nah, I mean, I obviously I mean, I. I've ter- talked about this till my face turned blue. Like I don't like resellers and it's, but it's more of like bulk resellers. I'm not going to hate it. Buy, buy selling and trading has always been part of the game. Right. Like that's how we got here. Like mm-hmm. not when we were all broke kids and we were able to get one pair of one shoe that somebody else wanted, we were able to sell that shoe for, because they wanted it and then get to pay their pair that we wanted. Right. Yep. So like, obviously it's all part of the game now with this act too it's actually going to affect that that whole process of being like yo now i want to sell this shoe for its top dollar and then now we have to pay taxes on that too it's all it's all messed up so yeah well I was but no say, yeah i was gonna say nah I, I, I don't i don't the last time i sold a pair of kicks might be yesterday i have a pair of 112 dunks that is nice Reseller. I'm a reseller. Re- he's a reseller. We got reseller. him. Reseller. I have a pair of 112 dunks. I just remember this. I have a pair of 112 dunks I've been sitting on for the past since they came out. And I've been trying to get rid of them because they are a size 10 and I'm a size 13. And I bought them for a size swap. That never happened. Did you hear uh, wait, Luke? Did you hear what I just asked that man? Uh, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, I, said yeah, yeah. I said, have you have you been reselling houses? I don't resell. I don't, re- I only I don't <laughs> resell. <laughs> Everything is for the toe. I'm not a reseller. Oh, on second thought, I just saw some shit yesterday. What yesterday. The, what type of hip hypochondriac, <laughs> hypocritical totally about it. shit are you on? Hippopotamus. <laughs> you fucking, oh my God. This is, that's a quotable right there. It's I don't quotable. resell, but I did sell, resell something. I, but I just <laughs> sold something, yeah. I just sold something yesterday. Craziness. <laughs> well, bad. God, I'm not happy about it. No, I'm not <laughs> out. Still listen, still listen to my podcast, please. <laughs> <laughs> we we got other things to talk about, man. Um, we did have a um, a restock of the undefeated Kobe's that oh, recently. Yes. Yeah, man. I um I, I don't think any of us actually try for them though. Here, yeah. Here's the thing: we had like yeah, there was what four four pairs that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, great pairs. I thought they were cool, but everybody. 
in it in my friend group was like bro are you really gonna try for these this is undefeated we're talking about and the because the bots are just awful on that website so it just never felt like it was worth the time yeah the whole Kobe line and you know i understand how everything's played out but nike has to eventually figure out you know and i i how to flood the market i understand the collabs collabs have always been limited and just that's the, the nature of the game but you know it people are just monetizing a man who people loved and remember we all will say this pre kobe's death you could find pro tro models on the shelves mm -hmm. so we do have to figure something out so I, I bought these for resale. Not just for <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so for me, it was I thought they're OK. I remember when these came out and like I just never liked the model. So I was just like, OK, like these are cool. But when they put like when they make it like a specific time and then they don't translate the time into Eastern Standard Time, I just go, you know what? I'm not even going to try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I was like, wait, is this 1124 my time? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, I'm good. I'm good. And so like, I just, I remember I got the tweet on, on the bus and then mm -hmm. I was just like, nah, I'm good. And then I just, just went about to what else I was doing. So, I was yeah. in the middle of a meeting too. I remember I was like on a phone call with somebody with like my boss and, and, and the notification went off and I, I didn't have that moment where I was like, oh no, I'm missing this thing. I was just like, I, whatever it happens. I feel like the last time I was maybe hyped for an undefeated Kobe collab was the one, the two, the the two shoe box. What was that? I think it was like a, an eight and like a, a Kobe eight. And so, it was like, oh, uh, you know, I'm thinking, uh, the, it's like the, one. The one was like uh, purple. One was yellow. The draft day joints you're talking about? The, I think, the, I think. the ones that just came out, the draft day joints? Was it? No, I, th I think it came out like two years ago. OK. The big okay. box. The big box. I remember like Shannon Sharp put it he put it on his instagram with him and his he's like these are dope with i don't i don't that's my shannon sharp <laughs> impersonation <laughs> can, can I actually, speak, dog. speaking of shannon sharp i want to change gears just a little bit yeah mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on like these celebrity guys who who honestly try to you know they're they're sneaker heads but they have the access so like the Shannon Sharps of the world, the Jimmy Fallon's like guys who I, you know, I mean, Shannon was an athlete, you know, so he's always wearing sneakers, but it just feels like, does it, is, is it, is it's not genuine or what do you guys feel about those guys? Hmm. I'm, I'm pretty fine with them for the most part. Like you can kind of tell when, when these people like really like shoes, mm -hmm. like I believe Shannon likes his shoes a lot. I think Jimmy likes his shoes a lot. I think when you have, I think like one of the most famous ones was like, I think it was uh, Gigi Hadid or Bella Hadid was on sneaker sneaker shopping. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, if he, if he wears these or these, then he can't get the, or whatever the fuck she said. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did see that. I don't about that. So <laughs> but she was like, she said something like that. And you just could feel that like somebody had told her before she got there. That mm -hmm. like, oh, these are not these. Nobody likes these. These are not cool. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it just didn't feel very genuine, I think. And like, you can kind of see through that. But like so, with some of these guys who are like, because you remember, they're like us. They're like, you know, they're sneaker nerds who got money. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, so I respect that. I, I think it's more of a, it's definitely when I look at it like that, it's definitely a, a influencer type of thing. Like, oh, who, uh, like, oh, we're, we know that this person wears a lot of Jordans. Let's send them the newest Jordan collab so that they could put it on their Instagram. So to me, it just seems more of like fake flexing than it is to like the flex is actually having that Nike connect. And versus like when you when you when you look at like DJ Khaled. All right. And he's like opening boxes, like boxes. He's opening yeah. boxes. Yeah. And he's like, oh, these are coming out next week. And these are coming out in two months. But I got them all right here. Jo Thank you, Jordan Brand. You know, major key. Like, and you're just like, man, I just skip them. And like yeah. Yeah. Shannon, Shannon Sharps was, is this exact same thing where he just like you're getting gifted this stuff. And 
you know, that's all good and dandy for you. But like, we are having such a hard time paying our own money to get these sneakers. Like, let's be, let's be real though. That's probably part of the deal. It's like, if you want Dior Jordans, you got to wear them, you know? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, that's part of that. That's part of the game of being, you know, an influencer. I mean, you, when, when you get something and I mean, I, I mean, shit, ha- I mean, that happens with me when I get, you know, and it's pr- kombucha. Like I get in, in these companies are like, well, you know, we're sending you this, but you know, we would like you to review it or we would like you to, you know, like, I, you know, that's, that's the game. It's, it can be kombucha. It can be sneakers. It can be makeup like motherfuckers, you know, you're getting their product for free because of your influence and, and whatever. And, you know, and people have, have connects, man. But I, I definitely feel like, like I, there, there's the Jimmy Fallon's of the world who I, I don't mind. And then there's the offsets of the world who I do mind. Yeah. Right. yeah. And but they, the thing is with Jimmy Fallon, which he, which was spoken about on the podcast that should now be named. Um, <laughs> but he used to go to DQM after like he would be in the middle for of like a drop like it, he would he would in the middle of like reading for like Lauren at SNL and he'll be he'll run from like uh 30 Rock all the way down to DQM and he'll cop some sneakers so okay. I think he's I think that's like a different thing and I don't mean to to um stick up for him because he did snub me one day but uh yeah <laughs> snub you? what happened I was uh I, I was uh I was at the bowling alley that's on 34th Street, you know what I'm uh-huh. talking about at Penn Station. Yeah. And I happened to see him there and I was just like, oh, let me go say what up. Like like he was like he was just like talking to people too. Mm-hmm. So I just went to go say what up and he just turned his back to me and that was it. I was just like, all right, cool. Damn. Ooh, cold shoulder. That's why he's not allowed on my podcast. No, just, <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> You know, you know what that that story kind of reminds me of. I, and I'm, I just, I, like, I'm getting into drink champs with, mm-hmm. uh, with, with Nori and shit. And I just watched part of the Cameron joint, and he said, uh, before you know, he like became Cam, like Dipset Cam, uh, you know, right before his first album dropped, him and his boys was in the airport and they saw Lawrence Fishburne and they was kind of fucking with him a little bit. They was like, Yo, Larry, and then he doesn't like to be called Larry. And, you know, he was basically like, I'll fuck y'all up. Stop talking to me like that. Right. And maybe flash forward. He didn't know who they were, basically. But flash forward six, seven years later, Cam's boy is driving Cam's pink range or whatever. And Fishburne comes up to his boy. And he's like, yo, is that Cam's, you know, range type shit? It's like, I love Cam. And the moral of the story is like, yeah, he dissed them when they wasn't popping. But when you pop in, then Fallon's like, oh, my God, ha, oh, my God, I fucking love you, man. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God, I'm, let's talk sneakers. You know what I mean? So that's that's the game, man. That's how these people, that's how some of these people operate. Yeah, you're going to tell him, you're going to be like, you gave me the cold chiller and be like, ha, 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 no way. No, me? No, no way. I <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So yeah, that's a fact, yo. I'm going to get pulled up onto the show because of the podcast. It'd be like, and I'm going to be like, yeah, that, yeah, we've never met before. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's the fucking like, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, like it's the damn you cold shoulder me. He's like, dude, what what are you talking about? I don't even remember this. Like, and you're like, yeah. I fucking remember it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. so, yeah, I still remember my interaction with most death a while back. So yeah. <laughs> Ooh. You got a lot of cold shoulder moments, huh, buddy? Yeah, man. I met a lot of celebrities and it's not <laughs> and they like, did not like you. They, they... <laughs> It's the, uh, the most deaf one was definitely a weird one because he just told me yeah 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 i got a back. like we were talking i was like yo i love your stuff like and then like we were, we were just talking about music and then and this was at the at the roots's um concert in central park and so that's the first time i've ever seen mf doom live rest in peace mf doom um and then like most deaf comes out i get like quest love gave me uh drumsticks it was crazy i was sitting i was in like the special area for all friends and family and stuff like that and then most dev comes out he starts talking to me i'm like yo big fan blah 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 i start talking i start geeking out and i now i know this is my problem i geeked out on him and then because i geeked out on him he turns around he goes yo man uh i gotta go and then i was just like (laughs) and then i go all right cool he dapped me up and this man took two steps and started talking to girls that were like a small little circle of girls he was there for the rest of the night Uh, you can't disrespect you can't knock him for no. that though <laughs> yeah he was like yeah my favorite Haas I see this is weird because I don't I don't look at him as a celebrity but I look you know every, but people you know the the world does look at him as a celebrity but it's the it's the Michael Che incident oh, man no. I mean oh, it's no. the funny it's the funniest shit ever yo it's so it's so fucking it was so fucking funny because 
this is the first I think this I think this might be maybe my second time meeting Haas. This is this is my second time. The first time I met Haas really that I can remember in my mind was I did a show mm-hmm. and Haas, we were talking after the show because and, you then, know, and I, then you said, oh, you know, I got to be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right no, we, <laughs> we, we were see me who I am as a person. I, I don't blow anyone off. Like, I don't care. You know, like I, unless you're like, you know, in my face, you know, touching me, like getting a little too crazy. Like, I'll talk to you. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, that's just my personality. So, you know, obviously me and Haas, we probably bonded over some footwear shit. You know what I mean? And the next time I saw Haas, it was a fucking, it was like a party. And, and Haas was faded, I was, like I was gone. out I his was gone. mind, right? And <laughs> and I just remember um, we were, it was a few, it was a few comics. We were standing in a circle. It was like me, Michael Che, um, me, you know, I can't remember. It was like maybe a couple of the, the dudes who also were also on SNL, maybe like Derek Gaines, another stand-up comic. I just, I don't, I remember it was a few of us. We were just talking shit. And then Haas, like, kind of kept coming up to Che. I don't know how, like, you came up to Che or you were talking. And then I spoke to him once. I remember, so I remember one time I did speak to him. He was like, yo, I, and that was like, I wasn't even drunk that time. Like, I was like buzzed, yeah. but I went up to him and I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And I was talking to him about the last time we were, because he, we were talking, I was talking to him about the last time we chilled. Cause I, he, I, this is not the first time I met him as the problem. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and it's the second time I, I think it's actually like the third or whatever for Will Miles birthday, like uh-huh. at the knit, he was buying me drinks at that point. Right. Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. so, and then like, I was making fun of him. Like I, I'm making, not fun of him. I was making, I was making a joke about like, Oh yeah, you, I know you got the black card. And then he was telling me like, nah, the black card is mad heavy. And then, so like, I think I was like, Oh yeah, he knows me by now, but I was like buzzed. <laughs> so I go up to him and I start talking to him and I just like, all right, cool, whatever. And it was normal. And uh-huh. then the second time it was, I was gone. I don't even yeah. know who I was at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to, uh, uh, we had, I had to get to the point where I had to calm him down a little bit and I had to kind of like push Haas. So that way things didn't get a little crazier, but that's who I am as a person. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have let it get to the point where it was, you know, worse than it was, but yeah, I did have to tell a couple of people, Hey, chill, you know, he's, you know, he's probably, you know, drunk, but come it, make, make a long story short, Haas, you're a great dude. We have so much more to talk about on this podcast. So fuck <laughs> it is water under the bridge, bro. <laughs> And now, and now I'm, I'm now I'm on the show. So yeah, you're on the show. So <laughs> that's, oh. I want to I want to get into a quick story because uh, I thought this was fucking hilarious and also stalkerish, but it's who I am when it comes to the shoe. So yesterday, uh, Saturday, I was driving and I'm coming coming back. I just got a haircut. You know, just did some shopping. You know, so I was driving back home, and I am on for the listeners. I'm in Brooklyn. And I am in Crown Heights area. It's not the, you know, it's not the, the safest area, but it's, just, it's pretty, you know, pretty fucking safe. It's daytime. No one's going to get shot or anything like that. And I am at the red light and I see a guy wearing the Mars Yard uh, 2.5. He's a wear tester. He's fucking, he's wear testing the, the, the new Mars Yards. So, you know, my love for that shoe. And I, he looked lost, like he was probably going like to, he looked like he was dressed to go to brunch or some shit like that. You know, he's dressed up, like he's going to meet someone. So he's looking on his phone. I could tell he's like, which way do I go? And I roll down my window and I yell out, yo, bro, you got the fucking, you aware tested them shits is fire. Love them, bro. And like this white dude, I, on everything I love got looked like he got so he said thank you thank you and got so scared <laughs> that he just fucking pit, hauled ass oh. in the opposite direction because he probably was like if i lose these shoes nike is going to fucking f- make me pay out my pocket <laughs> and they're gonna make <laughs> you come after you they're gonna come after him but it was the because fu- it was like Lawrence, why you know but I, that's who i am I, I, i'm so secure and who i am now like if i see a dude with a fire pair of shoes i'll just be like yo respect because that's where I'm at in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I saw, like I said, I saw a dude wearing the wear testers, fucking yelled it out my car window, scared this poor little white dude in this fucking urban area. <laughs> and if you're listening or, you know, someone hears this, tell them Lawrence said, great shoes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> great shoes. He was going to, he was going to talk to you about for 15 minutes about how does it feel? All that other stuff. But you ran, but you You ran fucking ran like a bitch. Probably would have helped you find where you were going. 
But you ran. I, you fucking ran, bro, because you were scared because I yelled out my car window. Yo, Mars Yards, <laughs> you a weird test of them shits fire. <laughs> <laughs> what happened if he turned around? It was Tom Sachs himself. Oh my god, I would have fucking got I would offer my car for for uh for the, for, the, for a pair of Mars Yards. <laughs> That'd make you a perfect wear tester in New York City. If you yeah. lost your car. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna <laughs> you yelled at him and he actually put he actually put those shoes to the test after that. Know, he <laughs> He's like, I'm wrong, okay. <laughs> he, he hauled ass. Do you think if that's in his notes for the day? Yeah. It probably was. <laughs> Random black guy yells out a car window in the in the urban na- neighborhood. Love your shoes, man. Please don't rob me. <laughs> Ran very fast. Ran Ran very fast. fast. <laughs> shoes held up. Shoes held up. Shoes, to the held test. up. <laughs> shoes held up. Still on my feet. We're good. Still on my feet, man. So yeah. So when those, you know, like I said, man, I don't get excited about too many shoes, but man, listen, man, those are. I'm just I don't know. I, I don't I've never felt the love that I felt for a shoe like the way I feel for that shoe. I just don't understand it. Would you rob really somebody good. for him? Nah, I never listen. I I can tell you how many times I can't I've never robbed anyone. I don't think I could rob anyone. Uh especially now. I mean, I'm in my fucking 30s, man. You know, gun, what I mean? gun like, to your head. Gun to your head. <laughs> gun to my head. Gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put a gun to somebody else's head. And take their <laughs> shoes. <laughs> You see this gun that's pointed at your fucking head? You got to point at someone's head or else I'm going to shoot you in the head. <laughs> then I got to do what I got to do. You know what I mean? But I can't just... Nah, I couldn't rob anyone, man, for a pair of sneakers, man. I think that's that's some sucker shit, man. I just actually... And, you know, this is such a good episode. I love... This is the way this is flown. This is amazing, man. I, I just actually saw an article. There's a kid in Boston. Uh, mm-hmm. Lost his life. Was selling some sneakers and... You know, I guess it was, you know, transaction going bad, man. And, you know, and and I'm just like, I could never harm anyone for material goods, man. Mm -hmm. It just upsets me. Like this kid, 19 or 18, 19, his whole life ahead of him. You know what I mean? And and someone who, you know, can't afford, you know, whatever the ticket was on the shoe. And then you just choose to like take a life over it. it, it, It hurts. It's upsetting, man. Yeah. So I couldn't rob anyone. But with that being said, man, I would have definitely asked him a couple more questions if he just didn't run. Like I would have, you know what I mean? But he got nervous and it was like, uh, <laughs> where was it down a one way and you couldn't go like pull up the car right next to him? Uh, the the way traffic was coming, like, no, because where, where I was coming from, I was going this way and then traffic was going this way, which uh, for the listeners out there, that doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> It definitely like strategically and, and like map wise, you I couldn't have pulled up next to him. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, I, I just wanted to because I understand that feeling sometimes, you know, like I was just telling my boy the other night, I was like, you know, I said Yo, I wore I, last night, I just wore some shattered backboards. And I'm not saying I'm wearing sneakers for compliments. I don't. But at the same time, it's like I know that feeling when dudes like, you know, because women ain't compliment niggas on their sneakers mm-hmm. like i'm keeping it real with y'all like you could be like look at these look at these fucking look at these these 2003 air jordan ones that i'm about to break out and the only people compliment you is young motherfuckers and niggas that's it it's no women saying oh wow those are the 2003 jordan ones <laughs> wow did you wow you did wonderfully are wow. those ogs yeah no one, <laughs> yeah no one no one no one the Nobody's- only time Okay. Nobody's like no no female or women. Sorry, I don't know which one is the word to say now. Um, they don't they don't come to be like, damn man, you getting me wet with those two thousand three Jordans? Yeah, <laughs> no one, no one. That you you think you think a chick's gonna say, oh my god, you got the eighty five OGs? Wow, wow, like those are the original. It's my number. <laughs> no, no. The only I t- see you, I see you flexing. You got those Iowa dunks. Here's here's my number. That, that that's it. <laughs> that, that that listen. The only time I get compliments from women on on sneakers is when I'm wearing some pink, you know, something eye grabby, something yeah. really flashy. Mm-hmm. But like mm-hmm. you know, and I think and dudes, you know, it's like that's the thing. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm de- I complimented a dude in the barber shop yesterday. He was wearing a pair of twos. I don't, what year? I don't know if they were 2004 uh, twos or you know the 2000 you know tens or whatever, but. You still got you show people love, and it was just a funny exchange because I'm sure he was just minding his business, and some dude yelling out a fucking car window probably freaked <laughs> him out a little bit. You know what I mean? 
I mean, you lucky to be like, yo, what size are those? And be like, nah, wrong answer. My <laughs> size. <laughs> My size. So you said you said you wore shattered backboards and you just didn't have that same feeling, that same spark anymore with it, right? You know, yeah, just like like I'm I'm really interested in like like how this summer is gonna play out because it's like obviously you wear shit for what you want to wear shit for, but like I just you know, you have a couple shows and you're like, all right, I'm going to throw something nice on, you know, some nice kicks on. And it's just like, mm, I had like one person come to me and be like, oh my God, I love those those ones. And I'm not saying I do it for the compliments or the love, but it was just, it's a feeling like maybe I'm not into the summer yet and maybe I'm not into the whole like getting fly, fly, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It just feels different. Luke. This is this is one week after not having the sneakers app for Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> one week. Chronicle. Chronicle. We're, I'm, I'm chronicling it. I'm the I'm logging it for us, for our team. You'll be like first one's <laughs> denial. This, this step is. <laughs> like, I'm not over it yet. I'm not out yet. <laughs> what about you, Luke? Do you what do what like like I mean, obviously we are we are people who do like compliments, you know. Right. But like, you put on sneakers and be like, "Yo, I'm 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 flexing today." Like, what what is your process? Uh, thought process? Yeah, no, I'm still there. I'm definitely still there. There's a couple of shoes like when I wear them, I'm definitely like you know, definitely like hard knees, just like skidding around, you know, not really <laughs> trying to crack the toes or nothing. <laughs> hard knees. I've never heard of hard knees. I have no clue how to describe <laughs> it. You know, when you're just like. You know, you're not really bending or nothing. You're just kind of just walking real careful. You know, <laughs> takes you 20 steps to get two two steps normally. <laughs> but Man. yeah, I, like I'll still do that. But like, you know, I like the part where I stop doing that when I really just stop caring about it. And, and it, like I just let the shoe kind of become a shoe. That's the that's the best part for me, because that then I'm like, ah, who cares? You know? I mean, for me, I don't hard knees it. But I had I don't know what I figured out. Maybe it's just because I have flat feet. But my I don't really get creases in my mm. toe boxes, and like I don't know. I guess maybe I'm lucky. But like I mean, to to I guess bring it full circle for me, it's definitely I put on the sneakers. I've caught the sneakers for me. And I'm putting them on for me. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a big like oh let me see if I could get this fit off person either like mm-hmm. i literally throw stuff together and just just walk outside and mm-hmm. people be like god damn man and i'll be like <laughs> what i don't know like these are just some clothes I, they were on the floor they're not even clean yeah, and so, yeah like, like dirty sweatpants mm-hmm. on and grinches on your feet it's like makes no sense <laughs> <laughs> and, and people are like yo but hassan's fly and i'll be like <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay man whatever like <laughs> but yeah i mean i i've only had one female slash woman uh call call me out and be like yo what are those like tell me what are those and that's it that's the only time i've ever been stopped stopped but like yeah most of these dudes would be like yo all right kentucky sbs i see you or like (laughs) there was one time i was wearing what was i wearing i was wearing something and then in college and the dude called me by those sneakers for the rest of the freaking year that was it it's pretty strange of him i gotta be honest with you (laughs) pretty strange of him and you all know my who, friends would make fun of me. Just you know who like, else has some creases in their sneakers right now? Who? Uh, the USPS, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but uh, Nike made a Air Force One with uh, that was USPS inspired, and they're not happy about it. <laughs> uh, I actually I'm, like the shoe. I'm going to be honest. I like the shoe, too. I don't know why they're angry about it, though. You know why they're angry at it? Because fucking Nike's suing everyone for, for doing shit. So USPS is like, fuck it. We deliver mail late. You know, people don't like us already. And then Nike, you want to profit off of our shit? Sue your asses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think I, I think they're right. Mm-hmm. This is I think they're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think I will. more power to them. I'm, I'm for keeping the USPS alive so that they can steal my sneaker packages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just think like i don't know i feel like the shoe itself is it's very it's different like that whole vacuum sealing the top of the air force and then being like yeah now it's a package i think it's i think it it, it was what's missing from the previous two versions of the shoe um that dropped and i don't know if you guys have seen the paper ones you know i saw the, about? which ones mm-hmm. the pink gum ones i saw those 
the no the paper ones the paper oh, it's wait, like they put paper off? yeah you could like rip it off and unveil yeah. it so i mean like they're taking they're taking big swings out here um and a lot of people keep asking for newer stuff so i mean as long as they're taking these big swings i'm down with it but yeah mm. the usps definitely should get their money for this it should i thought it should have been a collaboration from the jump yeah you know you do like a a 180 a air max 180 but like the the uniform the blue uniform for the usps word that would have been sick or the eagle you do the eagle for the for the check or something i don't know <laughs> but they could have done something is my point yeah yeah exactly. yeah like i said i just i think it's uh i think it's just desserts the, i don't know if i use that right but just desserts. you did I did right. Just yeah. desserts. All right, cool. yeah. Just desserts, baby. Just desserts, man. It's like, come on, man, y'all, y'all. So, I mean, granted, certain situations are a little different, but at the same time, don't be out here thinking you're gonna profit off the USPS, man. Don't, you know what I mean? Like, come on, Nike. Yeah, one but, of those situations you're talking about was the was the Satan shoes that we talked about last week. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. Haas, what do you think of those? Like you, we, I think we talked about it last week. I think they are fire. Okay. And and I mean by the fire of hells. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> you will be uh, met with hellfire and brimstone if you ever bought those. But I thought I thought it was a great great idea as I as I mentioned before the show is that I am a fan of mischief. I have I I, I don't collect their magazines but I bought this one. Okay. Um I'm always I've been uh in a previous podcast that I used to host called Get Up on This. I I I we have a discord and and I was I was the first person to be like hey guys check out this mischief app and this was like baby t- like small um when they were first starting and it was like a little bit after they released the Jesus shoes which I thought were dope like mm-hmm. you know it's just a custom shoe that has holy water in it like it's dope so to have the the total opposite of that shoe I think is as equally dope because like let's be honest, this is it's pretty creative for like and and you're all they're also like what was really dope is the art on the box, mm-hmm. right? And it was also something that I feel like the shoe itself, even though it's all cryptically satanic and sponsored by a little Nas X, it still was a pretty good looking shoe, a black three sixty, and then you got a little swishy swish on the bottom of mm-hmm. one drop of blood. Mm-hmm. And some colored liquid. Some food, so, food. Was that was that a ninety seven or a three sixty? Ninety seven. It was ninety seven, right? It was ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven. All right, cool. Never mind. Ninety seven. Um, my bad. Not so good. It's all yeah. It's all good. So mischief. You said I thought mischief was a like a, a single person that was Mm-mm. a customizer. What is it? No, mischief is a viral marketing uh marketing company. So everything they do, they do drops. Like do like Supreme like Supreme, how they have drops, mm. they do drops, but these drops are just creations that they make to go viral. Like one of their drops were, um, they released, I think it was either three or four um, pieces of art. And the pieces of art were actually uh, just an oversized blown up, or I think it was a hand painted picture of three or four people's medical bills. And so you can bid on it mm-hmm. and you'd pay off their, these people who've had these crazy medical bills. And you pay oh. off their me- medical bills. So it's pretty sick. Like they do stuff like that. They did one thing that I fell for, which which is mm, pretty crazy. They put $10,000 under a number and like you had to just text the number and be the first one to find it. So they'll give you four of the numbers out of it and you just have to fill, fill in the rest. And so people were just texting numbers, texting numbers, trying to get it and it'd give you like this clue and then okay. the clue would bring you to another number and then you can get the money. So they do stuff like that. Weird shit. Cool. Yeah. There's one, the one, the cool one, which is the one I wish that I got into was they released these debit cards. So you'd sign up for a debit card mm-hmm. and they, they'd give 10,000 debit cards out and then they'll ping you at a certain point. Money will be put into this card and you can use it. Oh, wow. Wow. And then so people were just running around trying to be like, oh, use the card, use the card and check if his money in it. But they would like that was it. It's pretty crazy. Like, so, yeah, they do that. So would you guys agree that this was genius marketing? How genius was this? hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And I and I and I, as a person who's known about mischief for a long time now, since like last year or something like that, they I like I'm pretty sure most of the equity that they get back 
because a lot of people started investing in it. I think they got they got recently invested in like a couple million, I think, recently. Mm-hmm. All the products that they're putting out maybe cost like a couple thousand to put together. So the rest of that money that they're that they're either the views or whatever that they're getting from, it's just going to lawyer fees. So like if Nike wants to sue them, they're probably just way beyond like 60 steps ahead. I'll just be like, nah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's not gonna <laughs> happen. So yeah. <laughs> nice. No, I want to like, like that's the thing I want to see because a lot of the times Nike when they sue, they straight up play bully ball with you, man. Like you don't mm-hmm. have the money the, to fight the shit that Nike is will because you know. So I wonder, like I said, with mischief because that a lot of times you know, uh, with the the thing we saw with uh, what's my guy um, with the dunk Warren Lotus Lotus mm-hmm. right, that story was kind of relegated to sneaker news streetwear but the satan and, and obviously because it also involved little nas x mm-hmm. who is a a big you know music star but this was talked about in all realms of life like i saw like i i did a friend's podcast and and they're you know they're not in the sneakers and she's talking about the mischief sneakers and and i i just think it's genius you have to because I don't I think a lot of times these things are not even done to sell because you know it's just done to get the hype, to get the the brand, the person, you know, the recognition, you know. And mm-hmm. they were selling them for what a thousand dollars a shoe? Yep. Yep, a thousand and eighteen dollars. Come on, jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's sixty thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars, maybe? No, wait, no. No. Six hundred and sixty-six. Yeah, six hundred six thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, they got they got what they wanted out of that. Like mm-hmm. they got their name is out there now even more. Um, everything now from this point on that they drop is going to sell out instantly, and that that was a problem already. Like a ton yeah. of their stuff, they they released this thing called the Blur, and it was just a money a a, a box a, a like a thing of money, and it was just like. Twenty dollars. It would be like they literally put put in a, a website. And you just go. Uh, we'll give you if you give us twenty dollars. We'll give you something. And that's what I said. And it is. It just ended up being mm. um, twenty dollars. A stack of twenty dollars, like exact height and weight, and it was just blurred out in like a, mm. a in like some plastic. So it's crazy. Mm. So it sounds like just, you're bad with money, is what you're telling me. <laughs> I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I wanted to. I didn't buy it. But, but that is the that is the consumer group. No, but also this is a this is a good moment for Lil Nas X too. Because Lil Nas X gets an opportunity to rebrand himself, kind of push himself away from the kind of the like the kids artist that he was being perceived as, I guess. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. let him kind of grow into his own direction. So good for him, man. I think it, it's a win on all parts except Nike, which is a win for us, kind of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I want to change the subject a little bit and talk about people who are, uh, you know, who are doing things under people's shadows and trying to step out and change their lane. LeBron James, mm-hmm. um, we got Space Jam 2. And I, and, and I always said this, and I, and I will continue to say this, as a guy and LeBron James who will always be compared to Michael Jordan, this is just another thing that he's done that will continue to compare him to Air Jordan. Uh, the tra- trailer came out for the movie, and I'm honestly, do you think it's a it was a smart decision for LeBron to sign up to do Space Jam too? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent best best idea. Mm-hmm. All right, Luke, you tell me why you think it's a good idea. <laughs> He's gonna make so much money. He's going to kind of what so the same thing that happened with Jordan <clears throat> for my generation. The little kids who weren't really watching basketball will still know who LeBron James is. 20 years mm. from now. And I think mm. that's that's like important in some way. Should it have been Space Jam 2? Uh, I don't know about that. You know, I would have been funny if he did like a Disney version, uh, mm. like same concept, just Disney characters instead. And mm-hmm. Disney was just like, fuck you, Warner Brothers. Be great. But I think like it still kind of preserves the his legacy and mm. in its own way for this younger generation. So, yeah, I, I guess it's a good idea in my in my opinion. But let's see, hear why it's bad Us? ideas, because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> I mean, the main thing is that, like, these kids now don't even know what the Looney Tunes are, you know? That's so, true. like, you know, this is a movie that's for us, basically, like our generation, where 
we know what Space Jam is. We know who LeBron is. We know who Mike is. We know who the Looney Tunes are. And we know all these previous Warner Brothers properties that they shown in the trailer. Like, they freaking had the Iron Giant. Like, what kid now knows who the Iron Giant is? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's next? Star Kid? They're going to bring out Star Kid too in there? No, don't, so- don't show me Star Kid. I hate <laughs> Star Kid gets nightmares. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I feel like it's a it's a weird move because like I I feel like when it when Space Jam first came out, it was for us as a kid. Right. Mm-hmm. It was literally gated, catered, catered towards us like it had all the same jokes, all the Looney Tunes of it. And now they're like, oh, how about we spruce it up and bring it into the real world? But nobody watches cartoons now. Like what what are these kids watching now? It's like it's they're mostly watching anime. anime. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly anime. So like, unless you're gonna have LeBron and, and Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super, like it's not gonna be anything that's gonna be like, oh my god, my kids gotta watch it. No, it's it's this is a movie for us. He's it's just a, I feel like it's more of a passion project that LeBron wanted to do. He's such a big like he, obviously everybody would love Space Jam when we grew up, and he grew up with us as well during mm-hmm. that time. So. He just wanted to do it, and it just seems like a passion project, not not something that's gonna expand his reach. Like when he did Train Wreck, right? It was Train Wreck. Yeah, New Amy Schumer. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So like when he did that, that was more of a like, oh, okay, this dude can actually be funny. Like you know, um, versus this where it's just like, okay, he's in a leading role now, but he's basically doing what he's doing for the past fifteen years, which is try to fill michael jordan shoes no try to beat a fucking superstar team that's been put together just to yeah <laughs> that's it that's it that's it you got a point i mean damien lillard you saw damien lillard as a robot that was pretty <laughs> sick i hope they i hope they hit him with the dame time in there too that was sick. <laughs> I, I think like you guys said and like hosh like you said as well um this guy gets compared to michael jordan every day you know all the time is he better than jordan is he you know, then people say, oh, no, Jordan never lost in the finals. And you know, LeBron, this, this great athlete, longevity, all these stats. And then this is just another comparison to Michael Jordan. Oh, which Space Jam was better? Was it Space Jam 1, Space Jam 2? But I also understand what Luke is saying where, I mean, this this opens LeBron up for a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of, uh, you know... Uh, he's going to get a lot of residuals. He's going to get a lot of checks for these. The toys, bro. The The toys. toys, The marketing. The jerseys, all that Were there toys? I don't even remember. You know there's going to be toys. Yeah, I actually just threw out my my Space Jam doll that I had from like 96 or 97. Yeah, it's fucking, it was so beat up. Yeah. But it was just one of, that's what I'm saying, man. It's like the dolls, the the memorabilia, the, this guy is he's he's a great businessman. He's just, you know, he's a great marketer. He knows what he's doing. Let's not forget the sneakers. We might nah. we might get some cool sneakers out of this. We're not gonna get <sighs> no. when's the last time you go like yo, I'm out for LeBron. Let's go, let's go, let's go line up for LeBron. I don't I don't, listen South Beaches. Listen, maybe a hair maybe a hair 3.0 or something. Mm. I don't know. Put 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 Buck's money in a pair. Well, well that's what we're we're gonna compare. Now we're gonna compare LeBron. 18s to LeBron 11s. I mean, to Jordan 11s. It's like, Jesus, Mm -hmm. it's the comparisons on this is it's going to be uncanny to me. Oh, yeah. Give me the Space Jam 18s. Mm -hmm. Space Jam 18s versus Space (laughs) Jam 11s. Yeah, no. I, I, okay. What what I will say, the jersey, the jersey in the in the, in the movie and the and the shorts are fire. Yeah, they, they are. are fire. Yeah, okay. So you got that. We got cool. We got cool jerseys out of it. That's not bad. I, I doubt we're getting it, but hopefully, maybe we'll know. We're no. get them. We got the Toon know. Squad ones from back in the day. We'll get True. these two. Mm-hmm. True. All right, let's go through a quick roundup of uh, dunk updates, shall we? Sure. So we've got the Green Glow coming out this month. And then we also have um, the Maui Wowies that we wanted yes. to talk about, too. Uh, Lawrence, you expressed some interest in these. Yeah, from the moment I actually saw those, I actually thought they were very creative. And I, I really um, I really was excited. I just know the hoops and what's going to happen. But, you know, in terms of Lost City, but, you know, I, I would love to have a pair of those. They're very nice, very, very nice sneakers. These are these are if Comedy Pete was a sneaker, it'd be these sneakers. Ah, good. I actually saw comedy for the listeners out there. Comedy Pete is one of the hardest workers in New York City stand up comedy. He works hard. 
he's a great guy, uh, fun, funny guy. If you're ever on McDougal Street in Manhattan, you will see him because he has wonderful Hawaiian shirts, and that's mm-hmm. how you will identify Comedy Pete. <laughs> that's how you will identify him. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I like these. Oh, I didn't know the other side because this is my first time seeing this. So it's like a rip away situation. Yeah, yes. the shoe comes with the first top layer, the blue blue layer you see in the left shoe, um, and then you rip that you rip that joint off, and you get the mix of the Cheech and Chong dunk, right? Huh. Mm-hmm. And I guess, and then yeah, you get that and, the orange version. And then you of got the that hemp color. tongue. You got that hemp mm-hmm. tongue too. I like that. Nice touch. Yeah, Estimate. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, Lawrence, you're right. These are these are nice shoes. I like these a lot. I, I don't see uh the pocket. It, that's, you think it's, it's gonna have a pocket? A secret pocket. Of course, it's gonna have a pocket. It's tradition at this point <laughs> as you as you touched on my podcast the uh, oh they make sweet and they make sneakers man <laughs> what crazy <laughs> what were you saying lawrence estimated resale fellas what do you think 420 dollars i would be i would be ideal if it was 420 <laughs> but you know it's gonna be like 800 <clears throat> you think these hit 800 luke you think so uh you know what i don't know yeah i think it hits eight 800 uh i, don't I hope so. i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong I don't think so because the only two that the only like not even the white widows didn't reach that high. Like, right. but those are mids. Know. Let's not forget those are mids, and okay, people have fine. their feelings about those. <laughs> but the, the the purple skunks and the original skunks are mad money, all right? Um, but the Cheech and Chongs aren't crazy. Much. They're not eight hundred, are they? At this point, They're, I think they are. I don't think so. Hold I think on. they might be. And then they you, might be. Uh, I guess the walk the dogs are like five hundred right now. Right. So you you know you're kind of in that range. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna stay at eight hundred. What do you 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 think four twenty, Haas? What do you think, Lawrence? I think highs are um, a little bit more affordable on the resale market as opposed to a low. Mm. Um, if, if if this is any indication, we look at a dunk like the carpets right now, and they're around five hundred. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, these do have a little bit more, I think, hype on them, and I think more people are like, "Wow, these are kind of dope." No, so I will, so. I will say probably five to six hundred dollars, I believe, on the secondary market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, you know, not great, not great, not not undo like not impossible to get that money together, but I don't know, man. There's a lot of good sneakers around that tier that might make me want to pass. So mm-hmm. we just got to pray for for a retail win, guys. Yeah, I mean, I was able to cop a pair of clots, but then I realized that I think everybody was able to pop a pair of clots. So no, Lawrence was not. No, nah, was- Lawrence <laughs> Los was not able to get a pair of clots. So, <laughs> but, but well, you deleted the app though. That's not- yeah, but I'm, I mean, there was also I, no. Well, I was on um, Concepts. Mm-hmm. And they asked, uh, what nationality is the uh, oh, yeah, founder? I remember this, <laughs> this was last week, yeah, it was last week, and I was like, Asian, Asian, uh, uh, China, 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 China. <laughs> yeah, come on, man, what the fuck? And then seven minutes later, it was Chinese. You, you, I hope you get like a good bit out of this. You do this, I, I, listen, I don't even have no streaks, I don't even have no, no bit on that. It's just pure ignorance. So <laughs> <laughs> you got really nervous for a second, and was like, do they want me to put yellow? <laughs> oh, that, oh I am God. not losing my career no, 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 for that no, no, one. No, that no, is all not. Luke. Chobie. That's all me, man. Lawrence did not say that once. Not <laughs> once <laughs> on camera. I did not say that once on camera. <laughs> I've never said that unless I was referring to The Simpsons. Oh, um, man. <laughs> the, but I think like, the, do we think that the is this part of this shoe being, you know, coming out every year? Is this part of the dunk craze that there's that's being attached to it? Or does the 420 craze still, you know, is that still part of the culture of like, oh, I need to got, get these sneakers because I'm such a freaking pothead? Hmm. <clears throat> I don't think. No, actually, it's definitely I think it's because of this, the 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 SB craze. And the only reason I'm saying that is because we had a large gap between the white widows and the dog walkers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until like recently where, you know, that was when we started to see the culmination of the hype that we have now. And now we've had two in a row. We had last year, we had the, the purple haze and this year we have these. So, you know, 
And also, we were supposed to have the strawberry coughs last mm-hmm. year as well. So, you know, it, we we haven't seen those. We have, you know, those are kind of like a myth right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, mean, I wasn't a big fan of those, but I thought they were okay. I just think, like, I wasn't, I'm not a, I don't smoke. Um mm-hmm. You know, as per Lauren said before, I do drink. So <laughs> just not as heavily as like that before. Um, but the the thing is just like I never I I was never part of the 420 culture, so I never understood it. So I don't like the white widows I have. I was like, what is this? And then I, I learned I was just like, oh, this is some crazy weed. It's crazy um, weed. Yeah. So like the Maui Wowies, right? You I, are, both of you guys smoke. Occasionally. Uh, yes. What have you guys ever smoked Maui Wowie? Yes. I don't, I haven't. I don't know. Long time ago. I was like, in, well, this is the thing. They told me in high school I was smoking Maui Wowie, but like when you're a kid, they tell you anything and you go, yeah, okay, that, I guess I'm smoking that. Cause in, you don't know. In New York, I think yeah. in high school, everybody was saying the name of what was hot, but you, literally, I think everybody just smoked sour. I think so too. <laughs> but yeah what's, what's your point we 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 have not smoked we there's a 90 percent chance neither of us has smoked maui wowie i was just wondering like does this shoe represent the, the weed like at all that's that's all I was, what's the background behind it that's all i was trying to figure out oh yeah uh if you rip away at the at the uh at the weed it turns into flannel material i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, maybe it's got like a hint of spam mm-hmm. or uh, <laughs> or like pineapple flavor. Somewhere. Yeah, it smells I like pineapple you. fried rice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, do you guys want to talk about what's been going on with hats lately? Yes. The resurgence of hats. I don't. Sh- sure. Haas <laughs> yeah. is like super excited. The, uh, us two are like, like, I mean, uh... I, we don't talk about hats on this show, <laughs> but we'll we'll engage, we'll indulge you, Haas. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure Lawrence uh, was part of the hat craze back in the, the day, where everybody was copping hats. Like, it doesn't matter what team you're repping. You know, it was all about the colors. He was just rocking the colors, right? Um, now we're seeing that. People are getting their names off of just patches on the side of a hat and releasing their own hat. You got J Tips, who's like popping now for releasing different color hats. Pink Brims is another person. Blue Brims is another person. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have, if you just go to Hat Club, there's just a ton of hats just like selling out every single day. Um, and you know, I I wasn't I wasn't privy to it until me, maybe recently uh, during the pandemic with T Mark, who is a uh, shout out to T Mark. He's, he's now becoming like just more and more known as uh, just like he puts like Rockefeller patches, doom patches. He's like all these custom patches on these Yankee hats and they're going for a hundred dollars and they're just selling out day of. Can I ask you a question? What's, what's uh-huh. the deal with T Mark? Because I, I would always see him on Instagram and just, Dude has damn near every sneaker, and I didn't know what his who was he and what was his deal. So I mean, I've only know like surface level about him, but I I just know that he's just a dude from the Bronx, um, mm-hmm. and collects kicks, and he also just it, like got into the hat business where he just started customizing his own embroideries on the side. Okay, and like yeah, he just sold them off in the beginning, then mm-hmm. then all of a sudden. He's just connected. He started selling. It started picking up like the, those Yankee hats where it just said T Mark series on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any or else I would show uh, you guys. Um, but they like he just I think he started off with like a base price of like 70 bucks. Like so like the, the hat he would buy the hats in bulk. Like he would go to like shops, got, get like a ton of hats that that aren't selling. And then he would just get the get the embroidery on the side and just mark it up for like $20 profit. And then after that, he just got connected with new era. So now then now he just like gets the bulk hats and then gets them embroidered now. So all those patchworks, like you see, they're not like legit patches where you just like peel them off and move them on to mm-hmm. like, you know, un- like, mm-hmm. uh, like I added, he said, they're all embroidered. So it's custom ro- embroidery and which is why it's like super expensive now. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy because like, 
I'm not too privy on it, but I am starting to dabble here and there. But I know people who have been collecting hats for like years and years and years. And apparently this has been a thing uh, for about 10 years or something like that, where you go to get your custom embroidery on the side. If you know somebody, you get the hookup. Um, and then they were just like, yeah, we get to put it on the machine. And then people were just selling them. So, yeah. Nice. Ooh. I've never been a fan of hats because they make me look like I'm 12 years old. So mm -hmm. I just that's a curse of mine. I can't do like snapbacks. I can't do. I look like uh, like Steve Buscemi in that one meme where he's like, what's up, fellow kids? <laughs> <laughs> so but, I can't um, do hats. But I did. I, I remember like, you know, going crazy for like green brims back in the day. Mm -hmm. like, Oh, those are vintage. Those are those are nice. And I'd have them and then I just wouldn't wear them because they made me look too young. It's funny you say I, you say that about green brims because I at one point I think New Era caught on to that like lids caught on to that mm -hmm. and everything came out with, with green brims. Yeah, but so now they they're doing out. the same thing with the pink brims, aren't they? <clears throat> pink brims is different. Um, so it's a, it's actually like a breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. type of thing where this guy pink brims um, he whenever he puts out a hat or like is it's associated with the hat it has a pink brim to uh i think it's a it's either his sister or aunt or mother one three one of the three in his family um had breast cancer and they like those pink brims caught on after so mm -hmm. now people are collecting brim colors versus what they were before Jeez. crazy another thing to collect another thing to collect. what about you lawrence what are you thinking um, you know, I have my hat face. Um, it, you know, I, now I'm growing my hair out. It's a little, it's tougher to, to wear certain hats. Uh, but I do, you know, I mean, I've always been a big Supreme hat guy. I've always, you know, I used to, when I was in high school and, and I was a, a fitted hat guy, you know, and like you said, it didn't matter. I would wear, an, I would have a picture of me with an Atlanta Falcons football jersey on and then a Cincinnati Reds baseball hat. It didn't matter the fucking teams. It, all it was was, oh, black and red. All right, cool, man. So I think that's one thing I, I've learned in life. You know, it's things go through phases. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's interesting because like the storytelling that we're I, we're missing from sneakers is coming to the sides of a hat. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Like, mm. you know, we're getting like we're getting unique patches with teams like that are like that mean something to somebody right like mm -hmm. so like for me i had to have the um subway series new york mets new york yankees mm -hmm. patch that they put that they but it was there's two versions of it there's obviously the original um world series patch that they had that came out with the jersey and all that stuff but now you would have like people who like kith put out one that i bought and it was i think i paid 60 70 dollars for the hat um but it's like the two subways going and it has like the yankee and the mets on the side and it says big on his subway series world series mm -hmm. and 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 i was just like okay i have to get this um but yeah now we're getting like like t-mark put out a doom tribute hat where it has rip it, rest in peace doom on the side um and like yeah we're getting like stories that i feel like what made us buy sneakers are now being on the side of a hat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely all right so let's do uh let's do plugs let's wrap up the show guys let's do little plugs and then we'll call it a day how's that sound sounds wonderful awesome. Boss, where they can where can they find you thank you again for coming on the show today of course anytime anytime you can find me drunk uh with <laughs> lawrence trying to take sneaker circle pictures with <laughs> Michael Che. <laughs> uh, like you can find me on eight, eighth grade white girl on her Tumblr page. It's like you and hot and fucking Che. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can find me on all socials. I am who is Haas. You can find my podcast at My First Kicks Pod. Um, also, follow the TikTok. I do uh, uh, stories on my collection. So like I do one on one each day or whatever, whenever I can. Um, and then, yeah, follow the podcast. My first kicks. Hell yeah. Awesome. Luke, where can they find you, my guy? At Trevizus at T-R-O-V-E-E-Z-U-S. You could also find me on YouTube at Luke, uh, Luke Trevisi. That's my username. I've just been posting stand up clips lately. So you can check those out on there as well. Uh, you can follow the podcast at Sub Podcast NYC. 
uh discord link will be in the description join the discord we have a lot of fun in there Haas is in there we have a, a good time every week brad is back thank you for coming back brad we shout out you. brad <laughs> and then uh sub podcast nyc all social media platforms and shoot us an email too uh lawrence where can they find you every uh social media platform lzd325 and like you said earlier listen to the other podcast i hate this job uh we're gonna have some special guests coming up soon so <laughs> i'm excited uh yeah. Uh, yeah listen to it and uh you can follow chris cheney our uh normally third get a third host uh, not that Cheney on all social media platforms. Yeah. yeah. All right. This has been another episode of Sup FM. Anybody got any last words? Yo, wear your kicks. Wear your kicks. Go Gonzaga. I want Gonzaga oh, to yeah. win the national championship. <laughs> yeah. Yo, man. word. Yo, that three from half court Crazy. to end the game? Crazy. Crazy. All right. Go Zags. Later, guys.